Hey guys, so we're looking at another example of specific area message encoding. This one is from an actual tornado warning and not from a test broadcast like the other one was. So we should expect to see the TOR event code, which signifies a tornado warning. Here's the video which I'll be pulling the audio from. The reason I'm using this example is because the quality isn't nearly as clear due to it being recorded from a distant AM radio station, so there would be an additional challenge in getting it to decode properly. I did try to decode this earlier using similar techniques and it didn't work. There were just too many errors in the message. So there's a few things that we'll have to do in order to implement error correction and improve the reliability of detecting the message accurately. As I stated in part 1, a same transmission consists of three identical FSK signals sent one right after the other. These can all three be decoded and compared, which is basically what most same capable receivers do. To see why this would help, consider the following situation. So let's say we feed this audio to our weather radio and we get the following results. The first and third results are identical, but the second one is different. In the third character it has an H instead of a C, but by doing a best 2 out of 3 comparison, we can assume that the second one is an error, and the first or the third message are both the correct ones. Unlike working in real time with a live broadcast, in our case, we have the luxury of having all three of these signals simultaneously. So we could, for instance, mix all of them together into one waveform. This would have the advantage of increasing the signal strength threefold, improving the signal to noise ratio by 9.5 decibels. We could also decode all three signals before mixing them together, essentially providing a best two out of three for each individual sample. In this video, that's the technique that I'll be using. So what I'm doing first is just removing some of the noise here. Um, this is going to make it much easier to distinguish these three separate transmissions. You can see that's already made quite a difference. And now I'm just removing the space in between each transmission, replacing it with silence. So this is going to further make it easier to distinguish between all these. Just want to get rid of some low frequencies that we don't need that might interfere with being able to decode this. So I'm going to duplicate the waveform and then using the notch filter I'm going to get rid of the 1563 Hertz on the top waveform and then on the bottom waveform we're going to get rid of 2083. So what that's going to do is separate the two FSK frequencies. So we're going to be left with the ones on the top and the zeros on the bottom. And now, as before, we just want to apply the absolute value for these to detect the envelope of the signal. So that's the actual data that we're getting here. Um, the top one is the data, and then the bottom one is the inverse of the data, basically. So we want to invert the lower waveform there, and then I'm going to mix them both together. I'm also changing the project rate to 43,750 so that we have the correct uh, sampling rate that's a multiple of the baud rate. So now let's duplicate this three times and then get rid of the some of the transmissions like this. So now we've got each one stacked on top of each other so that we can mix them all three together. Want to make sure that they're all lined up though, at least as close as we can get it. It 
It's easier to do it at the end like this, but let's check the beginning just to make sure. Looks pretty close. So yeah, let's mix these all together. Now you can see that they're, the waveform has shifted a little bit too high, um, too far into the positive end. So we're going to have to apply some DC offset correction in order to get the waveform back down where it should be. We can easily do that in Nyquist just using the sum command. Um, so we're going to add a negative value to each sample, and that's going to shift it down like that. Um, I don't think that was quite enough, so let's try it again here. Mm, maybe one more time. So what I'm doing now is looking for the actual beginning of the message. So I'm looking for that first Z character. And now we want the first bit to be at least 84 samples long. But I'm probably going to make it a little longer because we want to give our program a chance to get the synchronization on that. There's been some changes to the program I used last time, and you'll see what that looks like in a second here. So let's save it as a raw file, uh, unsigned 8-bit. So here's what the code looks like now. The main difference is that instead of taking one sample for each bit, we're taking all 84 bits and averaging them together before making a decision. This should greatly increase the chance that we get the correct value for each bit. The other difference is that we're repeating this for 84 different starting points with the hopes that at least one of them will give us the correct synchronization. Now let's compile and run the program. So you can see most of these in the middle here look like they're pretty accurate. Uh, this is a warning for two separate counties. And then the first county is for Marion County, Iowa. Then the second one is for Warren County. So the, the event code should be T-O-R for a tornado warning. Uh, we did not capture the T in this for some reason. But overall, I would say this, this decoded much better than I thought it would, given how bad the quality is of the audio that I started with. Um, but anyway, we can... I mean, pretty much everything other than that we can see just fine. It's WXR is the originator, um, TOR, tornado warning, is the event, uh, and then those two counties, plus 30 minutes. So this is an effect for 30 minutes. And then 181, so 181st day of the year is when this was issued at 1846 Universal Time. So that would have been... 12.46 or 1.46 p.m. local time. And then finally, the WHO, that is the radio station that this was recorded from. The National Weather Service in Des Moines has issued a tornado warning for East 